Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish, and we are back with the conclusion of Chapter 1 of Betrayal in Antara, my first blind Let's Play here on the channel. I want to thank you so much for joining me and for bearing with me through these last few episodes as we built up towards this ending. Man, we are making bank off of this the dolly paste and I frankly am thrilled it's working out just like I had hoped see we're getting 60 per stack of that uh, it's going so well so um, if you were not here for the previous episode we did a little bit of running around and um, Wasted a little bit of time, you know, I kind of got turned around and the game was being a little bit obtuse. Uh, I will share some of the blame, but I won't take all of it because the game did not make it 100% clear or even 90% clear or probably barely 50% clear exactly how we were supposed to get those swords blessed and that resulted in a lot of mad dashing back and forth between Sortiga and... Aspreza and other towns, but we have cleared out all of the Montari between Sortiga and Balmestri. We do have blessed weapons. We have accomplished our purpose in that uh, in that vein, and um, we're just about ready to go, folks. There's not really a whole lot left to do here before we go on to Panizzo. So, what does that entail? Well, last couple things on our checklist before we actually head out and call it quits with Chapter 1. Um, we have got to run back up to Amatsi and we're going to talk to Farmer Bruna because he is the gentleman to whom we gave the deed last time. Uh, we won his farm back, right, from Lord Garson. Remember that because uh, if you weren't here, you can catch that on YouTube, of course. The VOD is over there on my channel, which is linked here on my Twitch. And, um, man, that was an adventure I wasn't expecting. So apparently Lord Garson hired a witch to curse his crops so that he could collect... Farmer Bruna's, uh, like, lands as back taxes, which is, uh, super shady. Very, uh, very uncomfortably topical. <laughs> I don't imagine we have a whole lot of witches here running around cursing people's land, but, uh, the whole, like, you know, setting people up to fail so that you can foreclose on their mortgage thing is just, you know, very painfully just... See, that's what I said. I was like, hmm, yeah, I think that there's probably laws about that, and that's what William said, too. It's like, nah, fam. Nah. We ain't be doing that. You're gonna have to give that back. And so he did, in exchange for our silence to William's father. So... We're going to go up there. We're going to check on him. Um, that should bring an end to that side quest. Before we do that, while we were over in Montari country, um, we found a cave. We did not explore that cave because we were getting close to the end of the episode. There had been a lot of running around and distraction, and I was pretty worn out. I was at about the end of my rope after all of that faffing about and uh we left it for this time so we're going to start there because that way we don't have to come back <laughs> because i don't want to do all of that running around yet again so we're going to go and check out that cave we're going to head up to amatsi seed farmer bruna and then that's it that's it it is it is all on to Panizzo from there. So, I hope that y'all are ready. I'm ready. Also, I want to introduce you to our new party member, Wide Potion. 
this is what you missed, fam, if you were not here for the last stream. So uh, do be sure to follow, to subscribe, and uh, to like and follow me over on Twitter, Facebook, Pillow Fort, YouTube, and stuff as well so that you can catch up and keep abreast of what's going on on the channel here because you missed friends like Wide Potion. Yeah. Right? This is this is my new favorite party member, frankly. I still I can't look directly at it. I can't, I have to click away. I have to click away because Wide Potion is um Wide Potion is something else. That's all I know. I still I have no idea. My my only thought for how it wound up like that because that cannot be intentional i cannot believe that that is an intentional design is that they had something more like this where it was supposed to take up like four slots in the inventory and somehow it got smushed and i don't know if that's in the original version i don't know if that is just uh in like the the, the port for gog um I, I in steam like the modern version i don't know what i do know is I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Very timely, Aaron. That's what I know. What I know is we're doing something wrong. So. There we go. That should be the last little bit. Boom. I am actually going to keep one dose of Fidali paste and some Fidali leaves because we can get ale just about anywhere, but we never know for sure when we might need that. So there we go. We have definitely turned a profit. We have broken 3,300 burlas. So, we're at full stamina. Um, Aaron has learned his newest spell. Oh, but I do have a surprise for y'all. Look at this. Because we got something else. So, yeah, he learned Hotfoot. But now, boom, we have picked up a new area of magic. Remove, dispel, or eliminate an effect, substance, or condition. Yes, save the changes. And so now, check this out. Range, light, remove, unseeing eye. I don't know what that does. I'm guessing it's some sort of stealth spell, like an anti-detection spell. We will see. Mm, Kaylin's archery is at a delicious 40. Her melee is getting up there too. And so is Williams. He's almost done with that and lockpicking. I can't wait. And I'm hoping that this last little bit here is going to um, take care of it. So, here we go. Off to the cave. All right. Light them up. Okay. Hmm. Well, so far it's a fairly straight shot. That kind of makes me suspicious. I'm not 100% certain what that indicates. Ah, but look here. Lizards. Okay. Let's let them come to us. Oh, wait, these are the ones with the ranged attack. Ah, uh, yeah. I have to remember that. Oof. Oh. See? And he's poisoned now. We didn't really have a great way to deal with that before, but now we have Fidali Paste. Alright, Kaylin, get up there and help him out. Let's end this quickly. We don't want to stay poisoned. Okay, the poison damage is not doing that much, so that means that actually if we, like, rest, we can stay ahead of it. Uh, so what I am going to do is I am going to send him up this way to help interfere with these lizards. We need to get them good and dead so that nobody else gets poisoned. It's a good thing that their aim is terrible course now that I've said that. Alright, William, you get those. Kaylin's gonna go after this one. Catch him. 
Oh, come on. Why can you not get up there and get that guy? None of you can. Okay, well, you know what? We haven't actually cast this yet. There we go. Let's try 12 points of damage. Heck, let's go for 15. Because, um... This affects targets who aren't carrying metal, unlike Lightning Bolt. Don't miss. There we go. Didn't kill him. Wow, I actually thought that that would take him out. I thought that because he'd already taken a hit, so... Ooh. I hope that Kaylin's not poisoned. There we go. Got him. Oh, she is. Great. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Looks like maybe we can't recover stamina while poisoned. I was going to say if we just rest, we can stay ahead of it, but I guess they thought of that. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and let's see. Can I... There we go. Ugh. Aaron scooped up a glob of paste with his fingers and sucked it down, grimacing at the vinegary taste. Within moments, he relaxed as a soothing warmth spreading through his body indicated the paste was counteracting any toxins in his system. So there we go. He is no longer poisoned. Well, get over here then. Oof. dead. Oh. Kaylin is poisoned. Yes, she is. Uh, her melee went up, though. Her melee did go up. Okay. Um, there we go. Let's see. Oh, I saved some for, for good reason. There we go. Excellent. Now, these guys weren't carrying any treasure. No, I was hoping, but you... Okay. Hmm. 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 All right. So we've got one passage to the left, one to the center, and one over that way. Oh, and... No, okay, that is where we came in. Don't, don't get turned around now, Starfish. I'm going to go up first. Because every time we've been in a cave so far, going uphill has been to our benefit. Oh, oh, it branches off again. Okay, well, let's keep going up. Okay, well, hmm. I guess we'd better rest. We'll just randomly sleep for 25 hours in this cave. Because um, Aaron cannot return to full stamina right now, you know, like without going to an inn, I'm using torches rather than uh, his moon glow spell. Because we have a bunch, we haven't been in a cave or anything for a while, we've saved those up, they're not doing anything, so we have torches to spare. Now. Hmm. Why is that like that? Is it partially open? Is that going to be a secret door, perhaps? Make sure that I haven't gotten turned around. Ooh, okay. Does this maybe come back to where we were? Ooh, well, there's a chest. This looks like a dead end. Okay. Well, hey. Sure. Large, locked, normal chest. It does not appear to be trapped. Well, if it's locked, then it wouldn't be. That's what we've learned. Okay. Oh, but you know what, though? I don't want to be stupid. There we go. Just in case. We have been blown up before. No, don't give up. Don't give oh. up. There we go. 
Hey, check it out. A ruby. William had heard many women described as having ruby lips, but none lived up to the real thing. Men fight equally hard over either. Cool. And a sapphire shield stone. Excellent. So now we have an emerald shield stone and also a sapphire one. We actually give that to him to keep because that way it'll take up that slot. All right. Hmm. Well, back up this way, I guess. Still a little confused by that. I don't know if that's just a texture glitch or what that is. If that is something and anybody knows about it, you let me know because... I don't know. Jack. This is just... Oh, there we go. I was about to say this is an empty room. That doesn't make any sense. But hey, another treasure chest. Unguarded, even. Hmm. Large, locked, normal chest. Well. Let's fix one of those things. Hey. Ooh, nice. Rations. And who is carrying that? There we go. Ooh. Dummy me. There we go. More yellow eye. Let's see if that'll stack with what we've got and how much it will stack. Okay, ten. That's about what I figured. Oh, yeah. Speaking of figuring, I need to remember to do that after every battle to keep them up in tip-top shape. Nice. He's gotten so much better at that. Okay, excellent. Uh, this way. Okay. Another side passage. I'm waiting for... Whoops. That noise actually startled me. There we go. I'm waiting for Montari to uh, pop out and grab us. Oh, see, there's another. Look at that. Maybe that's deliberate and it's just meant to, you know, kind of add character to the surrounding terrain. But this is in Montari territory. So I am waiting for them to sort of jump out and get us. I'm surprised we haven't seen any yet because, well, maybe it's because they were all outside. We killed so many Montari out on the road and in the field. Oh. Okay, suddenly lizards. Boom. Get him. Uh. No, uh, God. There. It doesn't seem like they can poison people with their regular melee attack. It seems like it's only that ranged spit that they have. Which is good. That means if we close with them and threaten them, see, they're going to run for it. And it's also good that their their aim is pretty bad. But nonetheless, it sucks because I don't know how long poison lasts. I don't know. It will cure itself eventually. Like, it's going to run its course. But I don't know how long it will take. Dang, Aaron. Come on, friend. There we go, William got his. Take it out, Kaylin. Still? Really? Wow. Very surprised. They seem to have kind of varying hit points. Oof. Dang it. We need a shielding spell of some kind. That's what we don't have that we really need, is a defensive enchantment. He has yet to learn any kind of defensive magic. Okay, Aaron is poison, right? This we know. I don't want to use all my Fidali paste, but at least if we do, then, I mean...
like Sortiga is right there. We can make more, but that would still suck. Now we're kind of going through the torches. His defense went up. That's good, at least. Oh, nice. Damage went up as well. I. That's just with time, I suppose. Her defense went up. Melee and lockpicking. His lockpicking only went up by one, but that's fine. Because melee is about to max out, and then we can untick that one. Now, I see a silhouette up there. A humanoid silhouette. Is that Montari? Is that a Montari? Oh, it's an NPC. There really is someone here. Oh, cool. We've not gotten to see... Like, we can tell that the Montari are... Um, they're not human. That was made obvious. Like, the way that they talk about them, they're obviously a separate race. Like, you know, they're some kind of goblin or fantasy orc or whatever. Uh, but we have not actually gotten to really see one up close. This is cool. Good day, Montari. Do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? I don't talk to humans of inferior station. Uh, please forgive my companion's limited social graces. I am Squire William Escobar, fourth heir to the House of Escobar, son of the Governor of Pianda. I am deeply honored that you have received us. Mm, I see. Yes, that's quite an adequate social rank. I am Chi, the leader of this colony. Please continue. Wow. Okay. I wasn't expecting that voice. Um, hmm. Let me know if the volume is good for y'all because, uh, of course, on this game, it does, it, it do be kind of tricky. I'm always afraid that the music will drown me out or suddenly, like, get really loud and startle people. Uh, but then I don't want the dialogue to be too low so that you can't hear it. Anyway, this is, this is interesting. Take a good look at our first up-close and personal engagement with a Montari here. I'm not sure some kind of rodent they're not mole people but of course we've been told that they're excellent at digging and burrowing and that's like why they live underground um but some kind of rodent from the shape of their face and, and stuff huh interesting and they seem very concerned with social rank we knew that they were peaceful because the montari that we have fought are like, um, those are outliers. They have been driven to banditry by food shortages and stuff. Uh, but otherwise, they're peaceable, and the humans on the surface have perfectly good relations with them. After all, like, they make great chocolate, if nothing else. So let's see. What do they have to say about the drought, in fact? Is the drought causing problems for the Montari? Yes. Over the course of several sleep cycles, our river dropped until it was no more than mud and puddles. Scouts went above and discovered that a noble in Imatsi had diverted the river to water his fields and fill his moat. Water is now scarce. What we get is dirty and carries disease. Ooh. Is that why the Montari are attacking villages? Yes. I'd heard that some undisciplined blacks and browns had been raiding human towns and also other Montari settlements. This is not the way of the upper caste, the greys and golds. But desperate times lead to desperate measures. Mm. Uh, that little mm. That's <laughs> That's so funny. Why well, he sounds like a Winnie the Pooh character or something. Okay, so yeah, I'm interested in this. They have different castes. So when we have fought Montari, they have always been labeled as Black Montari. So apparently that is a particular like hierarchical thing. So, grays and golds are the upper castes. Blacks and browns, I guess, are the lower castes. But we've also learned, it sounds like Lord Garson is, ex like, he's at the root of all of this. It comes back to him again, so it's a good thing we're going to Amatsi anyway, because, uh... I didn't know there were other kinds of Montari. Hmm. Then you have not been well educated about us. There are three, no four, castes in our society. The worker caste, the caste of physicry, or what you would call craftsmen, the warrior caste, and of course, the ruling caste. The gold Montari are the ruling caste, right? Why don't we ever see the other castes? It is not befitting that they leave the colony. We, the ruling caste, are the only ones meant to mingle with uplanders. 
Hmm. That's interesting. There are a lot of masliths in these tunnels. I suppose it's a real problem getting rid of them. Get rid of them? Why under earth would we want to do that? Aren't they a nuisance? No, they're delicious. Oh. <laughs> I suppose you prefer eating unhatched chicken embryos. Not when you put it that way. Why does he know the word embryo? That is the... Weirdly, that's the only thing that takes me out of this whole scene. I can deal with all of it, but then he used the word embryo. I'm like... Hmm. That's... That's a weird chocolate to put in my, like, medieval fantasy peanut butter, so to speak. Your city is most impressive. How long did it take to build? We do not build. We dig. Kyrie's innermost tunnels were dug by our ancestors. We continue the expansion. Through low more sand, several black Montari can dig 500 feet a day, if under close supervision. Through shale or river deposits, not so far. Hmm. Okay. Well, this has been an interesting interaction. It was good to talk with such a worthy human. But there's much work to be done. Hmm. I bid you good cycle. We'll be on our way then. Have a nice, uh, cycle. Hmm. Interesting. And I like the little turns of phrase, the way that they do keep it kind of lore consistent or that an effort was made to have their speech patterns, their dialogue, their turns of phrase kind of match up with the civilization that they would have. You know, like instead of saying why on earth, he said why under earth. And uh, calling them sleep cycles instead of days because they don't tell time by the sun if they live underground. Okay. Oop. I'm still doing that. Even though Titan Quest is over, <laughs> I still keep hitting M to close the map as well as to open it. Muscle memory. Uh, just finished that series, so if you haven't watched it, then head over to my YouTube and you can find it there. Okay, good. This is a tunnel we have not explored. Hmm. I'm starting to feel too comfortable. I'm moving too quickly. And I should be more careful because I know that if I don't watch my step, there's going to be a random encounter. Oh, oh, look at this. So this is their underground river. Ooh. Yeah, no, there's not much left of it. Hmm. A large locked chest. Ah. Come on, William. There we go. Oh. Oh, hey now. Oh, what's this, though? Montari chainmail. Oh, so this is that black armor they've been wearing. Hey, an impressive feat of metalwork. The lightwe uh, lightweight links in this suit of armor were virtually unbreakable. Despite years of study and failed attempts, humans remained unable to match the astounding resilience and craftsmanship of the stylish Montari mail. So it's not blessed, but look at that. Hardness 35, damage absorbed 10%, even at condition 18%. So, like, it's, it's badly beaten up armor. And still. Wow. Okay, here, I'm gonna hand these magic gems over here to our boy Aaron and this is okay yeah we've already used that that should be enough I think no one more uh there we go okay I want to compare these so protection um for this leather armor Damage absorbed is 33% when it is at 95% condition. So at almost perfect. 
the leather armor absorbs a little over a third of any damage that they take, and it's got hardness 15. So the chainmail decays much more slowly, and it's got 10% damage absorption even at 18%. Can we repair it a little? Smith might do better, but I've already done everything I can with this. Okay, we're going to have to hang on to this. Who has? She's got the most room. I'm going to let Kalen carry this so that his backpack's not completely full. But that is a great find because we could take that to the Tinker in Espreza. And we could have some heckin' good armor. Man, I hope we find some more of that. Oop. Lol. Come on. I got really turned around. There we go. Okay, let's see what's down here. Oh, another split tunnel. Uh. Okay, well, I'm going to follow the main tunnel first. This is the one we came down here for, and we'll get the side tunnel on the way back up. Oh, is that another split? It is. Oh my goodness gracious. These tunnels are sizable. I am glad that we put this off. Look at this! They branch off every which way. Are those... Maybe those are meant to be like unfinished tunnels or something. Got to keep checking where I'm going. Make sure I don't get too lost. Wow. This is quite a complex. Now I understand why they called it a city. What do they what do they call it? Kyrie? Oh man. Look at this. Every which way. Okay. Um let's rest, I guess. Oh, okay. Okay, I think this is going to loop back around and come back to that first cavern. Okay, so let's let's try this way then and hope that's the case. Oop, I think so. Yep, because there are the dead massliths. Okay. Excellent. Well, still plenty of exploring to do. Okay, we went that way, so let's try here. I want to see where this central tunnel goes, because that other one had so many branches. And this one, it looks like, has them too. Oh my gosh. It's a good thing we have an auto map. Because if we didn't, I tell you what. Oh, hey. This will be a good landmark. Hmm. A large locked normal chest. There are no obvious traps. That's different from it does not appear to be trapped, isn't it? That inspires a little less confidence. Okay, well, hey. What's this? Oh, hey, it's wine. Cool. More pickaxes. You know, there's a thought. Maybe we should be looking for gemstones. There we go. As we head around in here, because you never know. There are a lot of tunnels down here. Some of them could have gems. Oh, Lord. They are starting to run low on torches, though. Okay. Okay, so that one connects back up. Okay. All right. That is the one from earlier. Okay, then it looks like this is going to connect up with some of these branching tunnels from that other section. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That made a loop. This is going to connect right here, I bet. I would be so much easier if I could just drive around in map mode, but... 
that spell didn't last long. That really tells you uh, what the passage of time is actually like and how quick it goes. But yeah, I wish that I could just... Uh, fine. I wish I could just drive in map mode, but... If we do, that's when we will get into a random encounter. You know that we will. Okay, let's see here. Alright, so this is going to loop back around that way. I'm guessing, yeah. Huh. Okay, these parts we've already been through at least. I know that I can ignore. Whoop. What are we hung up on? Oh, a corner. Geometry strikes again. Okay, this way. Watch, I'm being so careful trying to avoid random encounters and stuff, and I bet that that one or two set of lizards that we fought are like is all the combat that there is in here. This is all pointless. But I don't know that, so I have to act like I don't. Oh, another chest. Okay, hey. Is it trapped, though? No obvious traps. All right, William. You know the drill, my guy. Hey, look at that. He's getting way better at it. Uh, who has that? Okay, we give that to him. I think one of you said that maybe one of the reasons why some of this stuff wasn't stacking is because unlike with herbal powder, for example, it's not all doses. Some of these, for example, um, are individual items with a number of uses. So that's why, like, this is 18. Um, and so this 12 and 14 won't stack together or whatever. Those are separate shield stones. Because that also um, indicates, like, the amount of protection that they have available. Because that's the way that they work, so. Ah. Oh, no. It's okay. If I drive in map mode like this, we don't need the light. Party is getting tired and should rest soon. Man, y'all are always tired. Okay, fine. Man, William's dad must really wonder where the heck he's at. Okay, this time, because we are resting and he's not at maximum um, stamina anyway, I'm going to use Moon Glow instead of burning any more torches because we have used a lot of them. But I think... It looks like we're done. Yeah. I don't really see anywhere that we haven't explored. I think we're good. I think we're good. So let's get out of here then. Back to the world map. Ugh, there we go. Phew. Okay. And with that... It's time to return to Imatsi and find Farmer Bryuna. Looks like Farmer Bryuna's, or uh, Brunia. I keep calling him Bryuna. Is it Brunia? Has it been Brunia the whole time? Uh, looks like Farmer Brunia has been busy, Kayla noted approvingly. The grass was neatly trimmed, the shutters fixed firmly in place, and colorful drapes hung in the windows. There was no answer to their knock, though. Uh, he must be out in the fields. Oh, these fields where those those the tufts were at. Yep, here he is. Farmer Brunia, 
Good to see you back in the traces. Oh, my good friends. Welcome. Excellent. Hey. Your farm looks to be in excellent shape, Farmer Brunia. The field so nicely plowed and planted. Except we couldn't help but notice one that's been left to run to weeds and cowthorn. And without it, I'm barely growing enough to keep my head above ground. Oh, that field will be the ruin of me. Well, why not plant it? I'd have to do all the work myself. My field hands won't go near it. The Danderheads believe it's haunted. Oh, okay. Is that the field that was cursed, perhaps? In that field. My best field, mind you. The men say they've seen weird lights a-dancing by night. Heard things, too. And one of them swears he's seen a ghost. The shade of Garson's farmhand, what died last year in the threshing accident. I can't get my men to step foot on that soil. I tell you, that piece of land could well be the ruination of me. We'll keep our eyes and ears open. If we learn anything about this Hector Spectre, we'll let you know. Hector Spectre? Like... <laughs> okay, that's... I, you don't see the word Hector used that often anyway, and certainly not in this context. Good luck to you, Farmer Brunia. May fortune smile upon you, young master. Hmm. Oh. A growing anxiety turned to abject terror as the party moved toward the field. By tacit agreement, they moved no further in that direction. Huh. Is that something sticking up over there? Well, I guess we can't see. Huh. What is that? Oh, and then of course it gets dark. Well, fine. I wish that there was something we could do about this. Like, maybe if we could blow that up or if we could dig it out. I mean, I'm sure that a shovel is not going to be sufficient. I don't really know for sure what would be. Huh. Okay, so this is the road that heads south to Panizzo from Medova. And there may or may not be, like... Whoa! Aha! I had escaped to leave the map just as Kalen was warning us about an ambush. I was about to say there may or may not be one or two random encounters or scripted encounters here um, because we did not come this way. Let's see. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Unseeing Eye. Targets an enemy. Duration five phases. I guess that means rounds. Blinds the target, reducing defense, melee, archery, and spell accuracy by 40%, and range by 50%. Okay. Well. Hmm. It only has one charge level. But that is a heck of a demon, folks. That's going to be really useful against some tough opponents later, I'm certain. Yeah, run for it. No one likes you. you know what? Get him, Kalen. Uh, let's see. Black Montari. Black Montari leader. We'll hit this guy. We can hit both of them. He's already damaged, so yeah, there we go. I'm going to spoil myself and shoot another arrow. Nice! Well done, Kalen. Oof. You know what would be great is a healing spell. There haven't been any of those yet. Get him, gang. Come on. Get him. There we go. Well, that's what you get for jumping us. 
Yeah, here they are along the road, see. All right, rations. Herbal powder. Do we have room for armor? We do. I am going to risk... Okay. Uh... Yeah, there we go. I'm going to risk taking this with us because these small shields and stuff do sell for quite a bit. And we are on our way to Panizzo, where, presumably, we will immediately find a decent shop. Um, I choose to believe that um, there is going to be an opportunity to sell both weapons and armor here, uh, because it's a big city. So... I will be very surprised if that's not the case. All right, more Montari. Yeah, see, we didn't come this way towards Panizzo before we, you know, obviously we stopped. So one or two encounters should be expected. Sneak up on them. Damn it, Aaron. Ugh. You noisy, noisy boy. Okay, let's see. Let's try our new debuff. Why not? Cast spell. Let's put it on this mage. Yep, that's it. That's the one I was thinking. It does lower your accuracy, indeed. Good, because the spell that they usually cast on us is hot foot, if it's not a seeing eye themselves. So he'll have a much harder time um, hitting us with that, and a much harder time getting away. Meanwhile... Let's finish this guy off. Is that the leader, maybe? Yeah, okay, well, now, there we go, that'll finish him off. Take that guy down. I'm gonna rest. hit this guy. Kaelin can come right on over and help. Two hits should take them out. Oh man, I needed to repair. Crud. Rest again. Y'all have to help me remember whenever I get out of a battle I've got to repair weapons and armor to keep them tip-top shape. There we go. Nice. Well, those battles went just about as well as they could. Okay, now before I forget, 78%, oh, 74%. He is okay at repairing weapons, but he doesn't seem to be as good at that as he is at repairing armor. 94. Ninety-seven. Eight. Not bad. Okay. And what have y'all got on you? Some cash, herbal powder, chicken, extra crispy original recipe. Okay, now that, um, we really just don't have the room. Uh, what I can do is I can trade these two suits out just because that's 93%, this one's 97. So, give that to her, because hers was at 94. There we go, and that will sell for a bit more. And there's Panizzo right there, so if there is an armor shop, then Um, we can come back and grab that because it's going to be a very short walk. So. Oh, party's getting tired and should rest soon. Rest? But they haven't done anything. Wait here. I thought I saw something up ahead. 
We could be walking right into an ambush. Thank you, Kaylin. Okay, ooh. We've got two. Count them, two. Filthy, dirty mage boys. Okay, uh, this seemed to work well last time. He's furthest away because I think William can get to that one. Can you? Oh, you can threaten him at least. That's good. That that'll that'll work. Okay. I'm digging this debuff spell already. Alright, let's see here. I think we're going to have to help William out. Because two mages and three warriors is kind of a big deal. So let's see. I'm going to put him over here where he can see a little bit better. Because I need line of sight to the warrior. Because I think Kaelin is probably going to need some backup too. Got to get that mage. There we go. Okay, the other mage is no longer debuffed. I expected it to last longer than that. Otherwise, I would totally not have moved air and I would have just rested last turn. There we go. Okay. Another lightning bolt for this guy. Take him down, William. Nice. Two against three. I much prefer those odds. These guys are getting to be pretty handy adventurers, aren't they? Gonna rest again. Man, William did take a couple of hits, though. Piss off. I'm resting with him because this is a done deal at this point, and that way he can have another lightning bolt or something if we need it. Okay, money, herbal powder, herbal powder, rations we don't need because there's an inn literally within spitting distance. Yet another sack. Man, they are, these encounters are stacked pretty close together. Honestly, I didn't expect them to be, like, that close. Well, that's fine. The more fool them. And let's see. Okay. I don't think Aaron got hit. There we go. Oh, hmm. Okay, well, that works for me. 87. Good, good, good. There seems to be a, a bit of a random element to how much he restores. But, still, he's doing a good job. As long as I remember to actually, um, like, do it after every battle in order to keep them in good condition, then he does actually keep them in good condition. <sighs> Lord, okay. Fine, sure, whatever. Now we will just... Uh, I'm not going to complain. That just means that we are eating some of that roast lamb and those chicken legs before they go bad so that they're not wasted and force us to tap into our precious, like, non-expiring rations. Okay, another one. I'm going to go ahead and... Get these out of the way. Damn it again, Aaron, I swear. Okay, five more of them, but this time none of them are mages. Black Montari. Ah, there's the leader. Okay, so. Get him. Lightning Bolt. Grab this guy on his way over. And then they will all head this direction so we can kind of control the battlefield a little bit. Go. 
which one's the leader? This guy. Got him. Very nice. Okay, Aaron. Let's even the odds a little bit more. There we go. 3v3. Kaylin. 3v2. Take five, my boy. You're gonna pay for that. Don't hit my girl now. Don't do it. You'll get your ass kicked. See? What I say, though. She's gonna beat the snot out of you. She doesn't even need any help. Really? Come over here and just stab William one time before he dies like a coward. Is this another... Oh, it's another leader. That's why he's taking so long to go down. Okay, I underestimated him drastically. There were two leaders. That's the first time we've seen that. I do believe. Okay. Huh. Well then. Okay. Uh No, this. There we go. Okay, 96. We got a 100 and a 95 there. The 100 of course is going to be for somebody. So, let's do We'll give that to William. It's 98. And we're good to go. Alright. Gracious. Okay. Well, my goodness. So... Bodies are piling up fast. I didn't expect there to be quite so much action around Panizzo, TBH. Because like I said, I knew that there were going to be some encounters. And I want to... Let's see. Let's double check. Okay, stealth, assessment, defense, melee. Spellcasting went up, assessment, and melee. Melee again, defense, assessment. Good, 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 good. Okay, things are advancing the way that I want them to advance. I'm, I want to grab these encounters because I'm thinking that when we end the chapter, what is very likely to happen um, is that um, all of these bodies that we have left, if we don't go back and like get the stuff from the ones I just marked, they will probably despawn because eventually... Um, the game is going to have to stop keeping up with those. It, it cannot let them all pile up and, and keep them cached in its memory, surely. Not a game this old. Um, and then, like, there can only be so many random encounters. So, like, we have kind of run up against the area where we're limited to. Uh, in this in this part of the game, and then um, once we clean out all of the encounters, I keep saying random encounters, but I'm pretty sure that they're all scripted. Uh, but once we clean out all of the encounters, that's it for chapter one. And then when we start chapter two, all these bodies will disappear, and there will be new encounters. That is my theory. Now it's possible that only new areas which we could not reach prior to chapter two will be populated with encounters and um, they may not respawn over here in chapter one areas I don't know I will be very interested to see exactly how that goes down but I am banking right now on um, th this stuff will no longer be available so like any encounters we don't complete probably won't be there anymore because chapter two is going to be different so even if it puts a similar encounter back in the same place, that still means that the one that came before it, if we didn't fight it, we missed it. 
So I want to get these, and that way we're not wasting anything. If we can get, like, their melee skill to 40 by the end of the chapter, for example, that would be just fantastic. I see one more encounter up there, back down on the way towards Sortiga. I am actually going to go ahead and rest. Ooh, and there's a chest over there, I do believe. Aaron again? Uh, uh, okay, Black Montari leader. Hit him first. Ah, uh, there we go. See, I cannot control the path that, that they take, so it's really great when they choose a good path on their own, and she went all the way around to hit him from the side, so that that way it leaves line of sight for her instead of her going, like, right here. All right, you get the mage, William. He's our mage masher. And any of y'all who have played the game before, you may know that I'm basically playing myself for a fool here. Um, it may not be that big of a deal. What I just talked about with the encounters and stuff. It, it may all be meaningless. But because I don't know if this is a blind playthrough, um, I have to play as smart as I can and use my experience with this game so far and with stuff like Betrayal at Krondor to manage our resources the best that I can based on what little I know because I do not want to screw us in later segments of the game when maybe, you know, a crucial one or two points in a skill might have made all of the difference. And because I missed some random encounter or, you know, didn't pick up an item or whatever, you know, it sets us back. There we go. Money, money, money. Ooh, a brooch. Oh, he's run out of room for herbal powders. Okay, she's already carrying some, so we'll start a new stack with her. And... There we go. Okay, well. Little repair work. That doesn't work. Well, that's fine. That just means that it's in tip-top shape. And that does not upset me, so. I love the clanging noise that it makes when he beats on this leather armor. 74. 76. Not as good that time, but still. Even if we just keep it steady. I was pretty sure. Okay, well, here, let's uh, rest. That's where I would want it to stop. Anyway. Oh, there it is. It's like I knew I saw a damn chest. Here we go. Medium unlocked normal chest. There are no obvious traps. Obvious being the key word, of course. That's not right. Oh, oh, that's right, because it said unlocked. Um, oh. Aha, see? I was trying to check for traps, but because he didn't find any on the first assessment roll. There we go. Oh my god, it's back! <laughs> it's back, folks! It's back! Oh, welcome back to the stream, Wide Potion! Oh my gosh! Oh no, they don't stack. There's two of them. Oh no. Oh my gosh. That is so funny. That's way funnier than it needs to be, than it has any right to be. I am not sorry that I find it that funny. 
And this is... Oh, I thought those were dead bodies, but... This should be the way back to Sortiga. Yeah, there's the woods. I think that we're clear now. Oh, hey. Look at me, I was mistaken. I was about to say, I think we came this far this way, and when we got into the corner, it was like, nah. Oof. Big oof. Okay. Black Montari, Black Montari. There's the leader. Okay, we're gonna hit him first. Ooh, good girl. Okay, lightning bolt. Do you know, I bet that it would be a little unpredictable. But... The hotfoot spell could be pretty good for that. For forcing an enemy to move out of the way so that it would clear line of sight to another enemy that you actually wanted to hit with a different spell like lightning bolt. Hmm. Don't know that that's the intended use. Maybe it is. Hey, good job hitting him with that debuff on. Honestly, I mean, like, they still made a decision, but context always matters, and I generally have sympathy for people's situations, and so I feel bad about killing all of these Montari at this point because of the way that they were forced into banditry by the fact that their river was poisoned and there's a food shortage and everything, and it seems like it's Lord Garson's fault. Uh, and we know that he's a piece of scum, so... Okay. Aha. Now we know that we've been here because that's the, uh, these are the woods north of Sortiga. Aha. Uh -huh. And there's, yep. Okay, so this is, this is where we stopped. I came around this way and explored here and then went down that way and Sortiga's right there. So that should be it. That should be the last encounter. Alright. Alright, here we go. Dun da da dun Panizzo. Hey, there we go. I love that music. And it's just like Medova, where it is another large walled town. Okay, we got several destinations here. The capital of Pianda still clung to its countryside charms. Amidst the low buildings and open spaces, smiling people strolled about their business in no particular hurry. Well, this sounds like a lovely place to be. Okay, so this. The Escobar Estate, the home of William's family for generations and seat of gubernatorial authority. Okay, so Pianda is one of the states of the empire. Panizzo is its capital and the House of Escobar are the governors in charge of it. Okay, that explains why people like Lord Garson are treating William with such deference. Scribner's Alcove, the most respected stationer in the province. Huh. Stationer. Uh, I'm think, so he is either a paper maker or some kind of clerk, like, like a, a copyist, maybe, or a scrivener. Think. I don't see that word used very often. Notice that I know what scrivener means, but stationer I'm not sure. So there you go. Bandera's Gift, named for a popular joyman's tale, the inn, known for its good cheer and better ale, was a favorite haunt of Williams. Okay, so we'll probably go there first. The Anvil. The building had no sign, but the ringing peals of metal on metal proclaimed it as smithy more surely than any slab of wood might. Okay, well, first things first. Hey! Free sword. No one saw that. Okay, let's see. Barmaid. This guy. Okay, so we have three people to talk to. 
I'm oh I was gonna say I was guessing these are gonna be the same because usually they are but the barmaid caught William's eye she sashayed over to the table flashing her petticoat with every swing of her hips my lord, so very kind of you to do us the honor of your presence. This humble establishment welcomes so great a noble. William laughed. He grabbed the girl by the waist and plopped her onto his knee, planting a kiss on her cheek. Pitsy, you act as if you don't remember me. Pitsy dropped the axe, snuggling into William's shoulder with a sigh. <sighs> but you've been gone so long, my crumb. Kaylin snorted. She crossed the room to the bar, Aaron at her heels. Pitsy watched her go, then turned toward William. She pummeled his chest and covered his face with kisses, demanding the reason for his absence. I see. Well, spicy. William's grin broadened. I'll tell you the truth, you minx, but you won't like it. I've been in Genuli, visiting the family of my future wife. Now what do you think of that, eh? Pitsy jumped off William's lap and grabbed both his hands, pulling him toward the back rooms. She laughed with delight. <laughs> oh, is that all? I thought you'd found yourself another girl. William protested, but Pitsy, I'm engaged to be married. Pitsy cut him off with a kiss. <laughs> but you're not married yet now, are you? Oh my! That did indeed get spicy, just a little bit. So there, there are implications! implications our boy William my goodness oh my he's a player well okay she's a player he's just in her good graces and let's see okay this is just gambling no problem. We haven't done much of that yet. I was thinking that we might have to use um, this gambling skill that he's apparently pretty good at. Oh, good. Um, in order to earn money in the taverns. Uh, kind of like I had to do the other night in The Dame Was Loaded, uh, where I had to play poker to, to make some money. Um, that's our Monday series right now, while Specific Pixel is still on hiatus for Final Fantasy VII. So go check that out on YouTube and come back and join me Monday for that series as well it is a blast uh but we haven't had to do it in antara yet because i've been pleasantly surprised at how much money we have accumulated i'm very happy with it so okay his melee has hit 40 so yay celebrate i'm gonna untick that which means the rest of these should level up much more quickly. And haggling has only gone up like three times this entire game. And some of you, I think, mentioned it to me and said that, like, we know haggling is very difficult to, to increase, but it's like you can only raise it once per merchant or something, I think. Um, and also the skill itself is kind of bugged. So I'm thinking about just unticking it to make other stuff go up faster for him in Chapter 2. I don't know. Hit me with your thoughts and let me know, especially if you've played more than I have um, and and know more of like what you're talking about. So that, that might be a good idea. Yes. His melee went up. Good. Good, good, good. Damage is almost maxed out. Well, Chapter 1 maxed out. You know what I mean. And, ooh, her melee only needs one more uh, point as well. Loverly. Absolutely loverly. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Now, uh, I would like to check the shop first. Okay, bread, meat pies, wine. They don't sell ale here. Hmm. That kind of makes sense, actually. Logano did not have ale. They had wine. Um, Sortiga, I think, sold wine. This place sells wine. So all of the cities that are just like, like a, just a step away from Sortiga are short on ale. Balmestri sells ale, but it's like a long, long walk away. That is probably to keep you from spamming the Fidali paste exploit, uh, like I just did. Perfect. Wake up bright and early. And hey, here we go. The smithy. Oh, he's got a crossbow and some arrows laying there. Dare I hope. 
that this fellow finally sells arrows. He's definitely, he sells axes for sure. Oh, 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 Do mine eyes deceive me? An armor upgrade? Chain mail. Hey, now. The chainmail, standard equipment among the Antaran military, was heavy, but well worth the extra weight. Its interlocking links and inner padding absorbed much of a blow's impact while preserving the wearer's freedom of movement. Wonderful. Okay, so this gives us an insight into the Montari chainmail as well. It definitely looks like that's going to be worth our while to repair, because what I'm getting from this is that damage absorption for chainmail at 100%... Um, capacity or 100% condition is 50%. The hardness is 25, which is better than leather armor by quite a bit. But the hardness of the Montari chainmail is 35. So I'm guessing that's the difference. It probably has the same damage absorption, but it has 10 more hardness, meaning that it decays down from 100% much more slowly. Cool. Cool. So we can buy a couple suits of that and get everybody an armor upgrade because even though that is expensive, we can definitely afford it. However, we will only buy two because we already have this. And I am definitely going to get that repaired, especially now that we see what regular chain mail is like. Uh -huh. But don't let me forget, I need to transfer this over to his inventory and see. There we go. Go ahead and sell that. Uh... We need to see if Aaron can even wear chainmail. Because if he can't, we need to know before we spend 650 burlas on it. Okay, now I saw something else over here. Oil. A byproduct of the silvertail fish, this flammable and tenacious glue, a goo clung to whatever it touched. A sword coated with ignited oil made an intimidating weapon. Oh. Okay, I was wondering, because I was thinking... Is that to, like, maybe it's an upgrade? Like, maybe it repairs leather armor better than an armorer's hammer does, but doesn't work on metal armor or something? I don't... Obviously overcomplicating it in my head, because what it actually does is apparently adds fire damage to your melee weapon. Well, to your sword specifically. I don't think we're going to use it on Aaron's staff. Um... The rate we've been going through it, probably we need to buy another armorer's hammer. Oh. Well, speak of the devil. Whoa, and that was a big jump, too. Oh, boy. You went up from 15 to 20. Okay, well, the game heard me talking crap, apparently, and decided to prove me wrong, so I guess we're going to leave that ticked. Um, okay. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Now that he's got room, can Aaron wear chainmail? Moment of truth. Yes, he can. He absolutely can. Okay, so that means we need to buy two sets of chainmail. I'm going to let him wear that until we get this repaired, and then I'll give him some regular chainmail since he gets hit less. I'm thinking Kalen will probably also have regular chainmail because if we can find some place to buy arrows, I thought this guy would have some. If we can find some place to buy arrows, she's going to be doing a lot more shooting and William is going to start being like more of the tank, even though he's slower, is ideally my plan. She's just so fast chances are I may wind up wrong and she is still going to be out in front anyway because she is more maneuverable. Um, but I would like to have her focus more on her archery and just back William up. Um, in which case, he will get the Montari chainmail. If that doesn't work out and it turns out that Kaylin winds up still being in melee a lot, we'll give it to her because where she's faster and gets more turns, she will get into the thick of it quicker than William, um, and she gets beaten on faster and harder, so. Okay, well, enough of that. This guy. The Scribner's Alcove. It's a bookshop. Hey, one of you mentioned this, I think, 
I don't remember if it was last episode or the one before when we were we were playing Antara and one of you said that you thought there was a bookshop in Venice, so this must be it. Yes, Cadman's memoir and Carleth mating rituals? Okay, well first things first. Uh let's sell these books we don't need anymore. Yes, ooh, nice. Since we can only use them once, that's a great price for a used book. Not to mention, of course. Ooh, 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 nice. Uh, that we can come back here and get them if we ever need them again. One Burla's for this notes. Well, that's fine because we got it for free, so it's all profit. And uh, frees up space in our inventory, which is definitely worth something. Here, now you can take these. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, one of the pieces of junk loot that I did not go back and get yet was we had another copy of that optics primer book, I'm pretty sure, and I put it in a treasure chest or something and left it. I need to go back and get it if it's going to be worth over 100 burlas. Okay, Cadman's memoir. The book was homemade. A pair of thin wood slats sandwiched scraps of parchment uh, with handwritten words scrawled in a barely legible hand. Okay. Yes. And this one. It wasn't until recent decades that paper became cheap and durable enough to be bound into volumes. Prior to that time, longer works were inscribed on parchment and rolled into scrolls. I don't know why we need this. But obviously I have to buy it. Okay, so let's see. Cadman's memoir. It doesn't say anything about what it is, so let's see what lights up red, right? <laughs> William flipped to a random passage. The memoir was a detailed and surprisingly entertaining collection of stories spanning the author's years working in the mines near Aliero. Setting it down, William felt like swinging a pickaxe himself. Okay foraging went up by five awesome okay his foraging's 38 so that should put him over yep excellent very nice i am so glad that one of you told me that everybody could use these books once because can you imagine if we got a free plus five to a skill like this and I just, like, used it on one person and threw it away? Oh my gosh, I would hate that. Oh, I would hate that. Whew. Well, that was worth it. Plus five to foraging for everybody. Now let's see what this is. William scanned the scroll, curious about why someone would bother to study the mating habits of Carleth's. That question was never answered, but he did find a fascinating section about the random nature of Carleth pairings and the probability of producing clutches of certain sizes. William thought he might be able to put the underlying theories to practical use. I bet that that is scouting. Because it's dealing with wild animals and like how they act out in their natural environment. Oh my god, it increased his gambling? <laughs> Someone's doctoral thesis on lizard sex made his gambling skill go up. Oh my god, I'm losing it. I am weeping. <laughs> okay 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 oh my god i guess because he said like because it was about probability <sighs> yeah oh my god it actually it makes their gambling go up that is amazing okay whatever well, that's good to know. Okay, I am going to save it, and I'm going to do a real save. 
we haven't done one of those all stream. I say real save, like these save files are any different from the other ones. It's just the quick save, the bookmark save is easier to accidentally save over, is all it is. There we go. Okay. Time to head to William's house. This is what all of this has been building up to. Nine episodes. Nine episodes. Thank you all for staying with me this whole time. I appreciate it. I'm so glad that you're here. And if you're not already following me or subscribed now that y'all have boosted our channel up to Twitch Affiliate, thank you very much. Uh, you can subscribe now as well, which is much appreciated. Then um, please do that because I hope that you're having enough fun to stick around for another nine episodes at least because surely the game's going to take that much longer. Uh, but they have been nine fun episodes. I cannot wait to see how they culminate. Let's find out. Not a bad looking shack. Trifle small, perhaps, but one can't have everything. Wow, skater. Ah, young master. Welcome home, sir. Hello, Jansen. Your father is a denim lord. <laughs> However, if you'd like to... Uh... Don't trouble yourself, Jansen, my man. I'll surprise him. If the shipmasters think they're going to get anywhere by striking, they've been mixing too much seawater into their ale. Just when you thought you were rid of me for good? Willie. Willie? Willy. Miss me? Oh, not much. Come here and give your mother a hug, you rascal. Oh. Mama, this is Aaron. If not for his bravery, you would be minus one son. And this is Kaelin, our resident damsel in distress. Welcome. She's gonna beat it your ass, It sounds like you've William. had some adventures. You can tell us over supper. Linaya, please set three more places at table. Damsel in distress, indeed. I'll damsel him. See? What did Hello, I say? father. Just a moment, son. So, start at the beginning. What did you think of Solana Sheffield? Oh, she was pretty. But she seemed to bear me a grudge. Perhaps she doesn't care for the idea of arranged marriages any more than I do. William, you are well aware of the benefits that an alliance with Lord Sheffield would bring to our house. Yes, Father. Now is no time for this discussion. Tell us of your travels. We weren't expecting you to be gone this long. My bad. William told his parents of his journey. Angered by news of the marauding Montari, Nathan vowed to send troops to push them back into their caverns. However, he showed but a marginal interest in the attack at sea until William told of Aaron's use of magic to defeat the enormous creature. And I thought that Finch could teach Aaron to use his power. To be sure, an untrained mage is a hazard to himself and everyone around him. Unfortunately, our illustrious court magician has gone off to his rabbit hole north of Medova, damn his eyes. William, take Aaron to Finch. Do it tomorrow morning, early before he has a chance to accidentally turn someone into stone. Aaron blushed at Lord Escobar's words. To help hide his friend's embarrassment, William continued his tale, relating Gregor's cryptic last words. After pressing his son for details, William's father leaned back to reflect on the information. The Imperial Consort is scheduled to pass through to Kor on his way to the palace. This Gregor's message could mean that the consort is in danger, or that he poses a threat. Either case would prove quite embarrassing to Lord Caverton. Much as I'd like to see Caverton squirm, having him in my debt would be much more satisfying. I need to discover the meaning of that message. As the one to whom Gregor entrusted his last words, I feel it is my duty to- Graham is away and Matthew is negotiating with the Shipmaster's Guild. Father, I really think that I... Have Chancellor Garrick meet me in the study. Wow. Dad's best a jerk. turn in. We have a long journey ahead of us in the morning. You're going to take me to find the Mage Finch? Of course. That is what my father wishes, is it not? That's rough, buddy. I mean... Be fair, the William, next that is morning, what we came here Lord for. Nathan Escobar returned from his daily ride. Rub him down and make sure he drinks plenty of fresh water and keep him isolated from the other horses. Yes, Your Grace. I will not have Zephyr coming down with this damn sickness plaguing my stables. 
Hmm. William. Oh, Willie. Are we going, or do you intend to daydream like a mooncalf all day? William stared at her blankly, then snapped from his reverie, and stalked out the door, leaving Kalen and Aaron to follow. All the horses except Zephyr have the sickness. We have to walk to Takoro. Takoro? Convenient. I thought I was to meet your court mage. Yes, I will take you to Finch before I depart for Takoro. Even with the delay, I should still get there before the consort arrives. Your father... Never actually forbade me from going. I feel I owe it to Gregor. And you want to show your father that you're good for more than just acting as his glorified messenger boy. I don't recall anyone inviting you along. But you rescued me from those wicked, wicked men. You saved me from a fate worse than death. <laughs> Seriously, you did come to my aid. I only think it fair that I hang around in case I can return the favor. Well, hmm. All right, I guess you can come along to do the cooking, but keep the editorial comments to yourself. Wow. Here. You are too kind, my lady. I'm gonna assume that was a joke. Kalen's exaggerated bow was lost on William, who walked determinedly away from his home. Well. Okay. Okay, so we've we've learned quite a few things. So uh Lord Nathan Escobar um appears to be suffering from a mild case of asshat. Uh, William has daddy issues, and the issues do in fact seem to be his daddy. So, Finch has run off, and we're going to have to go north of Medova and find him. But also, now, was it just me? Like, did I miss here, or did y'all hear the same thing when they called the Imperial Consort a he? But at the same time, Lord Garson back in Imansi said Emperor and not Empress. So is there a male Emperor and he has a male consort? Like, that would be awesome, but like, am I just misreading? Or, I don't know. I guess we'll find out when we get to Tikoro because we need to go there too. Um... I don't like that William's dad was just, oh, I will send troops out against the Montari. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> even in Antara, that's that's not the betrayal here. We don't we don't know what the betrayal is yet, but it's not that. Um, so, I mean, I sympathize with the Montari, and yes, they should not be turning to banditry, but like I'm sympathetic to subsistence thievery. Uh, and this all sounds like it's Lord Garson's fault. So really, he should be disciplining Lord Garson. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. Um, obviously, their inventory hasn't changed. Let's see if their skills have. Okay. His melee was at level 40. Maximum value is still 40. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, maybe it doesn't go up every single chapter then. Maybe it goes up every other chapter or something. Um, that's fine. That's totally fine. Because that just means that, like, the bonuses we have, like, for example, this one that pushed foraging up over 43, you know, they weren't lost. They're still useful. Um, and it also means that some of these skills, we're going to have a chance to max them out Whereas otherwise we might not have because like, for example, once her melee hits 40, I was thinking, you know, well, we take it off for the rest of chapter one. But then when we get to chapter two, we're gonna have to put it right back on. But apparently, no, the maximum is still 40. So we can untick that and we can put it back into something like, say, foraging or repair. So, OK, OK. Did you happen to unlock any magic? No, I feel like he's a pretty skilled wizard, honestly, in his own right. So the idea of him accidentally turning someone to stone is kind of funny. Um, OK. Well, we've done everything that we can do in Panizzo. 
So we need to find Finch north of Medova. And there's Tikoro. So that makes sense. We're gonna it's on the way. We're gonna pass through Medova to get to Tikoro. Uh so like right here is where we could not go any further. Remember, like along this road, kind of in this middle area, there is a pass into the mountains that comes out over in this general direction. And William wouldn't let us go any further that way because that was kind of our invisible wall in Chapter 1. Likewise, uh, we were cut off from going north to Bakriel from Briala. So, this right here was kind of our chunk, the state of Pianda, I guess. Um, I don't know if all of this over here is also Pianda. Maybe it is. We'll find out. But anyway, back to Medova before we do anything else. I will likewise be interested to see what happens with our encounters. Are there going to be dead bodies over here? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, looks like all of my map markers are gone. And I see field worms up here. So, yeah, I think I was right. I believe that I was right. I called it. That um, all of the corpses we left behind, and presumably thereby, like, any encounters that we did not complete, uh, they vanished with the end of Chapter 1. Now we're in Chapter 2, and we're going to have new encounters. So we're going to have to be careful, and y'all may have to help me remember that I'm not going to be able to just like run around in auto map mode carefree anymore because there's going to be encounters on the road between these towns again. Yes, yeah, that's what it is. We managed to find a gateway directly to an alternate world. A parallel universe, just like the other universe. Kaylin, come on. There we go. This might actually level her melee up. Come on, girl, you can do it. I believe in you. I have faith. 2020 has not completely drained me yet. Go for it, William. Go, go, go. Okay. Kaylin will finish right then. Boom, he just disappears. I love when they do that sometimes. Instead of drawing back down on the ground the way they usually do, they just... They're gone. Like that. Bless. Bless. No damage whatsoever. Didn't get hit. Up to 90. Good, good, good. Uh... Here's what I need to do. Dummy me. She didn't get hit either, so that was pointless. 95. Excellent. Wonderful. I also... I'm worried. One thing that I'm really worried about, and because of this, I, this is why I'm using the bookmark save as we head towards Medova. Um... I feel like we left some side quests unfinished, like that thing with Farmer Brunia's fields, right? There was still that curse over it or whatever, and it was haunted. Huh. Okay, so all of my uh, markers are not gone. Interesting. Maybe I was half right. Because look at this. Look at the direction we're going. Right. Traveling. And there haven't been any other encounters. The field worms are the only random ones. Everything else seems pretty scripted. Huh. Oh, well. Okay. I was about to say we made it all the way to Medova with no encounters, so maybe what that means is that um, 
it didn't actually like regenerate with all new encounters in all of these areas but nope here we go some bandits hey Aaron did it he did it okay we're like right next to Medova and they have a so like I'm, I'm just gonna hit these guys with arrows and lightning bolts and whatever. Well, lightning bolts, not arrows. You guys just stand there. I'm just, I'm just gonna kill you. So you know. Here we go. Nice, very nice. Grab this guy. The monsters, or enemies, I should say, because these are human bandits, they don't seem a lot tougher. Get that guy, William. He's got stuff. Don't let him get away with the loot. He still got stamina. Good. That didn't get through into his health. That's all that matters. Down you go. Hey, there we go. Cash. Grab this bread. Get that bread. Gotta get that bread. Single-use armorer's hammer. And I will put down our first new treasure marker. Of chapter two. Okay, I'm going to repair these weapons again. There we go. Keep them where they need to be. And... Let's head over here to Medova, and we're going to call it a night. We are indeed, because it's about that time. We will start out the next stream by finding Finch. Good day. Ooh. Mind if we join you? It's all right with me, so long as you don't jostle this arm none. Ooh, hmm. Interesting new NPC, so that means that there could be new people in all of the towns we visited. Not a very skilled job with the bandages, friend. If you don't mind my saying so, you're a mess. Handsome girl like you can say whatever she likes to me. Ooh. Yeah, I reckon I've looked prettier. My name's Leon. I'm Kaylin. How did you come by your injuries? I'm a message runner, a courier. At least I was up until a fortnight ago. The boss didn't believe I was robbed, and me, what come in bleeding, and with my arm dangling askew like it belonged to another man. He said I was drunk, that I must have lost the package and tumbled into a well. I've heard him call me a dirty Mayrot once too often, to know that he didn't sack me for losing that package. Aye, getting the gate was just snow on the mountain after those bastard nobles almost took the life of me. Oh... Yeah, this is a mood. I feel like I've been mugged by 2020 myself. You're a Mayrot? Aye, and what of it? Kor knows I didn't start the border conflict. I was born and raised in Medova proper, but try explaining that to these damn Antarans who call themselves patriots. Oh, so we have a hate crime. Mmm, a racist attack. Did I hear right? You were attacked by nobles? Aye. Nobles, unless being a cut purse pays a whole lot better than it used to. They was wearing velvet capes and talking that highbrow lingo. One of them hit me across the face and sliced my cheek open with a ruby the size of a sparrow egg. Why haven't you gone to the magistrate? These men must be caught and punished. Yeah, right. They all wore masks, so I got no way to identify them. And even if I could, it's my word against theirs. 
What magistrate's gonna convict Gentry on the word of a working man? And one with Mayrod blood in him at that. Oof. Topical, relevant, close to home. Poor William, you don't get it, buddy. The system is working exactly as intended. It was never well, built Leon, for justice. Take care not of yourself. for the poor man. I'll try, miss. Thanks for your concern. And not for the, uh, the non-native, unfortunately. All right, well, so we're going to rest here. And, uh... We are going to call it. I hope that you will come back and join me for the next episode of Betrayal in Antara next Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that is New York and Miami time here in the U.S. We've got some new shops to explore that were not open the last time we were here. We've got some new NPCs to talk to. We have some quests on our plate. We're going to see what we can do about Farmer Brunia's Haunted Fields, about Mage Finch, we're going to start tying all of these new loose ends together and see where the rope takes us as we braid it out. Thank you for joining me this time. Don't forget to follow and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit me up over on YouTube. Follow me on my Twitter, my Facebook, my Pillowport. Um, let me know what you think. Give me any ideas you have for the stream. Um, you know, if you have a game that you'd like to see me play, something like that, I absolutely want to hear from you. Leave it in the YouTube comments. Hit me up in the chat. Tweet at me, whatever. I will always look forward to hearing from y'all. And I will look forward to seeing you next time whether that is for our Monday, our Thursday, or our Saturday stream. Until then, as always, thanks for playing.